Hello, welcome to part two of my way too long playthrough of Pirates. <laughs> it's heavily edited, but it still goes on for quite a while. So I'm going to ramble on here for about an hour. And we we'll pick up now in Camp Peach. That's where I was headed, but part one ended in Veracruz, which is just across the way. It's close by, but just in that little Yucatan area. Now, traveling between Veracruz and Camp Peach is where I lost my first sword battle, but as I mentioned in part one, I yanked that out, I reloaded, so I wouldn't suffer that loss. It's the only sword battle I lost the whole playthrough, but I just wanted to have a more clean playthrough. All right, little music's about to pop on here. I don't know why I even bothered going for this map. I knew I knew where the map was, but I'm just getting another piece of the map to find my sister. It's quite obvious that's near Havana. The reason I even tried that that battle that I lost was it was my first the first galleon I encountered in this playthrough. I I really wanted that ship even though I was <laughs> heavily out gunned out manned, but I went for it anyway. It was a risk. Man, it would have been nice to have a galleon this early. You can see there in the news. I don't think I noticed it when I was playing because I edited it so much. But France had a brief war with Spain, but it's on that latest news. They're now allied, which stinks. I mentioned in part one, chance you didn't watch part one or forgot what I said in part one. There's only one other war with the Spanish. Fortunately the Dutch goes to war with the Spanish because that's typically my main target when I play but yeah the wars in this playthrough were very limited. So right now I don't have much hope of getting promotions. A little bit of music upcoming here as I find a first family member. she provides a map which I also mentioned in part one you get a quarter of a map to this treasure yeah so the Spanish plundered an Inca treasure and then the ship sank but the treasure somehow ends up buried on land <laughs> and this one is very obvious and yet for some reason I don't go right there. I, I sail around. But I'm not that far from it right now. I, I head north instead. I think. I don't know. Oh yeah, alright. Yeah, I've heavily edited these as I keep saying. I'm now searching for this other this other treasure I, I had a map to. Which is north of Cuba, so... I sailed west and around and then north to get around Cuba. So now I'm up these little islands that are just east of Florida. Yeah, I think I said in part one too that the rest of the parts, they're going to jump around. So I got to really pay attention to keep you up to date here. It might be a little difficult to watch that way, but I didn't think anyone would watch 10 hours of a <laughs> full playthrough. <laughs> if they'll even watch this, I don't know. So... Yeah, I sailed, I don't know, like I was saying, I don't know why I went this way. Not that I had to immediately get the Inca treasure, but I know where it is, because you can... What makes it easy is you can see the city right there in that, that other map. And it's, having played this game many times, I mean, anyone that played it will know where that is. But... I did visit that city... In, for, in the first part and mentioned that's the starter city for the English so now you can see I've sped up the gameplay when I speed it up I put on eight times speed the English don't like the Dutch but 
you know, too bad, I'm gonna help them. So, I got crew members leaving, but I need to get this Inca treasure before I divide up the plunder. And you can see I was going for it, but now a, a mutiny has appeared. <laughs> That's what that was loading right there is. Yeah, they can't wait for me to get that Inca treasure. Even though I'm like right, right next to it. So, I'm facing a mutiny. <laughs> Winning though doesn't solve all the problems here. It just keeps me in charge, but a whole bunch of people and money are going to disappear. Because essentially they're just going their own way instead of since they failed to knock me out as captain. But it's frustrating. It happened twice in my playthrough. I think I said in the first part that y they get restless if you don't keep attacking. I do check this map one too many times. <laughs> I couldn't. <laughs> I don't know why I had our time lining up where exactly the treasure was. But that's Port Royal. Royal or Royal? I think it's Royal. Part Port Royal right there. So we're on this island here. I which is Jamaica. So yeah, I went too long, I guess, of just... I don't know, it's hard to keep the crew happy the more ships you have and the larger the crew is, and there's a few things going into it, so... Yeah, I'm not in the right place. Uh, I searched incorrectly. I need to move over a little bit more. So those guys are stupid to leave because I'm about to get a hundred thousand gold pieces. Though the next, the later mutiny I face is, I'd say, is even worse. Uh, it's frustrating, but at that point I didn't really need the money, so though I lose a ton of money later, it's not significant. See, it's December 24th, Christmas Eve. I find a lovely treasure. Great Christmas. Every time the Inca treasure is 100,000 gold pieces. That's why you know, I keep saying, as I mentioned in part one, but I mean, hopefully you didn't skip it. But you can find four Inca treasures total if you're able to find each one with a quarter of the map. You can see I have this in speed up mode again. I'm going to need to divide up the plunder very soon. I'm just trying to sell my stuff first, which requires a couple stops. Because when you pl divide up the plunder, you're going to just restart with the last, with one ship and a little bit of food and cannons, I guess. But it doesn't matter if you have zero when you divide up the plunder, so you want to sell everything if you can. Not that it makes a huge difference, but you get a little bit more money. Some of the ships have good value. The galleons I think are worth 4,000, but of course I don't have a fleet of galleons yet. These prices are still quite low. I don't know if it's just because of where I am or the time or the year. Like, but sometimes those will be worth over 100 pieces each. Okay, so here we go, dividing up the plunder. So it says right there, Captain Journeyman, because Journeyman's the difficulty level I took. So I get four portions. And then you can retire, you can end the game. You can increase the difficulty level or simply plan another expedition, which is what I'll do. So it's been a few months, everything resets a bit. There's some new news likely, but I'm visiting the governor again just to see. Okay, you know what, earlier I mentioned the French became allies. 
That was actually before the war, so now the French are finally at war with the Spanish. But this war isn't all that long. So they were briefly allies. The war hadn't happened yet. I thought the war had ended and they became allies, but yeah, I didn't miss the war because it's just starting now. Which is good because I need to get those promotions to find more family members. I'm not sure I seek out every treasure I see where this one is, but they're easy enough to find, it's just sometimes it's not worth it. Once again, there's a lot of stuff popping up over there. You can even see the full map and where the city is. Okay, Holland and England made peace. I don't think that lasts, but I'm just concerned with the war with, with Spain. Alright, so I just fast forwarded, cut out all the filler, and are heading for the next treasure. We don't know how much this one is valued at. Yeah, I cut out a lot of the sailing because that it's probably half the game is sailing. Yeah, ship battles take place, but Let the music go. So I was saying, I don't think watching sailing is all that much fun. But the one thing you miss out is kind of where, how big the world is, and where I am at the time. Here I'm running low on food, so the game will keep telling me. But fortunately, I never run out of food. I I'm always able to capture a bit more food, whether through a ship battle or town battle. And so I jumped all the way back to Tortuga. you're getting a feel for where things are that would be say the Dominican Republic in today's world it's over there I mean I don't know how many cities <laughs> still exist under these names, but some of them probably do. It wasn't that long ago. I forget what time frame I took. Sixteen. I want to say sixteen eighties is where I'm at. A little more than three hundred years ago. Probably should have edited out more of these uh, these news, but you can also look at a ship's log, which I don't. I think I may do one time. I should have kept. You know, I hadn't thought ahead enough, but it would have helped with the recaps of where I am in each part. You can reference your ship's log, which shows basically your activity over the past month or two, or just depends on how many things you've accomplished in that time frame. It'll tell you like if you attacked a town or if you got a promotion. Of course, I am a big fan of Sid Meier. Now, there is a blog post to go along with all these different parts for this playthrough. And there's an interview there I scanned from an old magazine. I'm going to talk a bit more about the game and just how I like this game and other Sid Meier games. I haven't played all of his games, but I played a bunch. But this is my all-time favorite game. A lot of people will probably 
I mean, maybe it's your age, but people might change their favorite game a lot more in more recent. You know, just go with like the latest greatest game. Like, there's a lot of great games now, but for me, I would have been, I don't know, around 13 at the time when I played this, so it just stuck with me. You know, it had an impact. It's a very early example of an open world game. Not sure why I'm even showing this ship battle. I guess just an example of a ship giving up. Basically, I recorded the whole playthrough, then I chopped the videos up, and now I'm adding commentary after that. Yeah, I'm talking over the music again. I'm not sure how much that interferes, but keeping the merchantman. It holds a lot, so it's not a great combat ship, but it's good for storage. <laughs> what I really need it is to get promotions to get you know the next family member mapped to the next family member by going after the guy that has it. Probably could have cut more of this out. I'm not sure if something happens. Maybe there's another promotion coming up here. I believe there is, because I see music coming up. Basically, I left every single promotion <laughs> in the videos. There are eight ranks to get through. Sometimes they give you land and sometimes they don't. Sometimes it's a little bit of land, sometimes a lot of land. All that amounts to, I mean, you don't actually have a spot on the map that you can go to and build a base, which would have been cool. But it's just a bunch of land that is applied toward your, toward your wealth and final score at the end of the game. So now this guy's in Veracruz. You can see that area has a lot of activity for these story, little story elements. We had to go to Camp Peach, now back over to that area. There's Veracruz. There's one other city nearby, Via Hermosa. That's in the Bay of Camp Peach, between what the map calls Yucatan and New Spain. Which would basically be Mexico. You do spend a lot of time in cities, largely because you need to go there for promotions, to recruit guys, and sell off everything you capture, all the cargo. And of course, you can also repair your ships. I have an awful lot of merchantman ships. I don't usually bother with the small ships even though they're fast just because they don't hold a lot and I'm more about just acquiring as much as I can to sell so basically a merchant man is up and up is the way to go as far as you know, they hold a hundred tons so anything smaller just you know, I'll keep the ship if I'm going to be going to a port, so I can sell them if I'm really desperate for space. But I prefer just to have the large ships. I'm pretty sure I'm going to attack this town now. This is a pretty good early score. It does have three forts, though, which is really strong. for the land battle. I can't remember exactly <laughs> what I did. Of course, the forts still fire on you, even when you're walking, but 
don't risk losing any ships. Cause a few shots from strong forts and you could sink pretty quickly. Sometimes the uh I think they're gonna use ships right here. The enemy will use little boats to cross the water. Yeah, there they go. There's a lot of open space between my soldiers and the actual town or city. I keep calling them towns, cities, colonies, whatever. I also sometimes just lure them away with one group and just sacrifice the group to get near the fort. Tricky part is when you get near the fort, you really gotta be standing in the exact spot. It's kind of the edge to actually activate the duel. They're coming at me pretty quick here. But I didn't lose any land battles in the playthrough. I made it through all of them. So they also sometimes have horses, so cavalry units, and the player himself, you never get those little boats or horses, and you're always just groups of men with muskets. And they outgun me, they have a lot more men, a lot more muskets, but I'm sneaking away, I'm getting hit though. I wouldn't be showing you this battle if I lost. I do lose one ship or two. Well, I lose. Well, I got the two mutinies, and then I lose a ship at some point in one of the parts. Just from sailing into a town I didn't know was hostile. It sinks one of my ships. I mentioned I lose one sword duel. And late in the game, I try to extend my career, but then I decide, after failing, <laughs> that was a dumb idea, I'll just reload and divide up to plunder and end the game, because the playthrough was already too long. So let's see how bad the route man here. Oh, not too bad. We've got a fair amount of men. As long as you have a lot of men. You can last a while. So the enemy has a cutlass. Which is good. I prefer when the enemy uses the cutlass, because I can usually get more attacks in. Just because they need to close the, the space. They don't have good reach. This town had a decent amount of money, I believe. Yeah, 64,000 gold pieces is good. Considering you get 100,000 from the Inca treasure, and I'm already over that after dividing up the plunder. Actually, when you divide up the plunder, it then starts you, I believe, with the amount that you received. So, although that is your money permanently, it also is used to continue the the career. <laughs> All right, so I've jumped us ahead. This is Camp Peach right here. But Rear Cruise is where I needed to be. I guess I'm just feeling bold and attacking <laughs> all these large cities. This one has three forts as well. Probably left too many of these land battles in. And I don't show every single battle I do, but to give you an idea, they do vary 
mostly because of the terrain. So you can see some of the tactics, I guess, that I think I'm going down and I'm going to lure them with the other group. So of course the Commodore, I should mention this whole game is controlled with just the gamepad. You don't use the keyboard, surprisingly. So the Commodore only has one button, so you tap the button to switch groups or hold it down to move both at the same time, which is what I'm doing here. Now that I have them separated, I don't know how far they can see the enemies, but I think they know where I am. So yeah, I change course <laughs> to lure them down, and then I think I use the other group to actually reach the fort. But you can also set up your guys and then kind of lure them in, assuming they don't know the other group is there. Oh no, now I'm switching groups again. What am I doing? I'm going to leave that one behind to take a beating. Well, I run. Move pretty slow, though. Like the other enemy group is thinking about coming after me. It's hard to manage every group at once. That's why I just left the other. And it got slaughtered. It's gone. <laughs> oh, well, he lost a bunch of men. But all we care about is getting to that fort and winning the duel. That's why I always take the skill at fencing when I start the game. I I rely heavily on winning duels. Which I expect many players do. But yeah, they're catching up to me because I got the horses and I'm moving real slow. And the forts will be firing on me too. Now my group is angry. I'm at risk of losing control of them. Now they're falling into a panic, but I just get there in time. Oh yeah, this is really bad. 385 to 37. He has a cutlass. That's a longsword. We are near losing. This is very dangerous. <laughs> it's pretty amazing that I, that I win this battle. Gotta be fast. Can't really hesitate on this battle or we'll lose. But yeah, any time... That was risky because, you know, as, the so as I lose men, of course, it turns in their favor. I gotta be really quick with the sword. I said in the first part, you can win even if you're alone, but you gotta make a lot of sword hits without getting hit at all to pull that off. Yeah, I can't hold very much. A decent amount of gold, but I don't have enough space on my ships or ship. I don't know how many I have right now, but. Alright, taking a look at the party status. Do have two merchantman ships. So Vera Cruz is just across the way. Not sure if I show the whole journey. Oh, I lost lost the ship. I didn't have enough crew. So that's really bad. <laughs> I gotta dump everything. Yeah, that's what I was a little worried about that. I think you need a dozen guys for a ship, and I left that battle at nine. There's still enough crew on the other ship still, but <laughs> you always leave enough crew on the other ships, I guess, but... I think I may have left a fade in there. Sorry about that. I, uh, I Change. I mean, the way I was editing these was pretty tough. There was just so much footage to go through, and I kept 
cutting things and adding all the fade ins and outs and I probably messed some up but you gotta be careful in those battles when you just don't when you leave a battle with so few men even if you win you you run the risk of losing a ship oh look the treasure fleet is here do I bother attacking oh I can't because I, I have like no men <laughs> so I have to get in there to get to get that guy to get the get the map but without having enough men I, I can't attack the, you don't know what you're gonna get with the treasure fleet you're gonna get a fair amount of gold but not necessarily more than you'd get in another city battle okay that guy was stupid and didn't do anything <laughs> Not sure what I was thinking, but I went back there maybe. Oh, you know what? I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> that was a guard that tried to stop me from sneaking in, wasn't it? Yeah, that wasn't the actual duel I was looking for. That was a guard. You know, when you sneak into town, sometimes somebody will recognize you and try to stop you, but it's just a regular guard. They're not any match for you. So this is the Marquis de Silva. He's not fighting much better than the guard. <laughs> oh, he got me there. He's got the longer reach. But it just the, that sword just doesn't do much damage, so you can take a bunch of hits from it. Alright, so now we're going to get a map. in part one there were I think there were two maps I wasn't positive yeah this was one of the tougher ones I wasn't immediately sure where this is I do remember where it is now but it's down near actually where I started the game see it the Dutch city which I don't know how to pronounce Krakow Krakow that's just north of here Yeah, I edited the video to just jump right to, the, to where it is. I, f I just sailed along the land. I mean, you knew there was a land mass, so... And then I s you're just looking for some inland water on the land. And there it is. It wasn't too hard to find, even though I wasn't really certain where to look. So basically, I was on the opposite end of the map almost completely. just me sailing along the land all the way across the map so they tell you every family member tells you the exact same thing and so here's the new Inca treasure map and pretty much know exactly where this is somewhere near Eleuthera Jumping, obviously, to Montserrat, which wasn't too far from where I was. I'm trying to understand what I'm doing. I'm probably just rebuilding my crew at this point. This is, I'm heading north. But I'm, I'm like probably still with very few men I think yeah, you can see Spain captured that French town I mentioned in part one that it was weak and it would get captured okay now I'm fast forwarding a bit so I just hit a bunch of towns well there's a pirate battle I got a hundred men now
was really unsure how much to cut out. Because I want you to see, you know, this is the whole pirate career, what's happening. Yeah, I think I may have left another fade in there or something. <laughs> yeah, I messed up some of my editing. I just never edited this much before. Uh, here's a promotion. Give me land, give me some land. Two fifty, not bad. So here's another guy to find the next family member. Rio de Hatchet. So that's south of here, where we're at right now. Not positive if I decide to go there to head for the next treasure. Yeah, the editing is tough when you have 10 hours of game footage, and you gotta. That's a lot to play and a lot to watch. <laughs> and a lot to chop into pieces. And now I'm adding commentary, so I'm watching it all again. But I've got it down to, I think, three and a half hours. But I should have cut a bit more out of this, I think. But I'm not going to cut anymore right now. So I've decided to attack another town, which I'm doing a lot of. I don't know if I succeed. Maybe I do. Some of these I run away from just because of the wind. Looks like there's no wind though. I'm just going straight in. Man, they got 36 guns. You do not want to get hit by those. Looks like I'm going to make it. Oh, but I got hit. Now there's some light winds coming from the north at least. You don't have to go exactly to the fort, just in the area. So I made it. I don't have too many men though. I'm gonna lay a few forts. Oop, I'm getting hit a lot though. By the cutlass, which is bad. Yeah, pushing him back. Hit him once or twice more, should be victory. Probably knew I was coming though. They always seem to hide a lot of their gold before I get there. Yeah, they had warning of my approach. 11,000 gold. I don't know why I even bothered stopping, but man, they have a lot of stuff. Problem is, this happens all the time. Is you gotta leave so much behind. I just can't carry it. <laughs> all right, now I'm fast forwarding, looking at the treasure again. The one thing I'll note, I'll mention, you can see it clearly on these map screens. There's a gray line down the uh, the left side of the screen. It just happens every time I record footage on the Commodore. Sometimes I remove it. Sometimes it's not too noticeable, but it's always there when I record.
right, so that's Inca treasure number two out of four. So the family members, they're always the same four. Go sister, father, mother, uncle. All right, I'm fast forwarding again. Looks like we're back around Tortuga, that other town that's right there. What Tortuga? Port de Pax? Pie? Yeah, I don't know how to pronounce that. I assume it's a French word, and I never took French. <laughs> so I'm probably going to divide up the plunder soon. Because I got a fair amount of money. Kind of dividing it up after guessing each Inca treasure, maybe. Like 250 gold pieces is a, is a good amount. So you can tell I'm selling everything to divide it up. The only problem with waiting now is that guy I have to go after might have moved to another city. He was in Rio de Hacha. But they do move around. They don't always stay where you're told to go. So this is the French. They're allied with the English and Dutch, but they're no longer at war with the Spanish. So once you have a governor's daughter helping you, there's no option to propose to them. So that's why when you, if there's a character you plan on proposing to, you could just keep proposing even though you know you're going to get denied just because you want to avoid getting their help. But they probably won't help you anyway if they're being escorted by someone, like, meaning they're important. So here's another treasure map. And guess what? That's in Cuba again. <laughs> it's a pretty popular spot. Yeah, there's France and Spain make peace. Spain allies with England. Spain offers pirate amnesty. A lot of Indian attacks. Amnesty just means they'll forgive you if you go there and pay them, but I don't do that. Oh, I think this is a galleon. That's why I'm showing it. Yes. We found a galleon. And we're going to get it. Get our first galleon here. And in gameplay, I mean, I edited it, but this is probably almost halfway through my career. I'm finally going to get a galleon. Or at least a third of the way through the career. So galleons typically have a crew over 200. They can hold a lot. I don't recall which galleons are best. I mean, there's three different galleons. They only vary a little bit by what they can hold. A maximum crew on any ship. One of these is 288. So I'm doing good. I got him now less men than I've got. I'm raising my sail here to speed up and get close because I don't want to risk him eventually running away. I also don't want to risk sinking him, but I don't think that was a issue. I don't think I had a lot of guns. Plus, once you get them down to halt sinking, and sometimes you skip damage. Like if you're fighting a small ship, you won't even reach the halt sinking or halt leaking phase. <laughs> sometimes you'll go from like lost mass to explosion just because you're so overpowered. Small ships don't hold up too well. Of course, we're going to keep 
talking over the music. I think war galleons are probably the most common of the galleons. This is just a standard galleon. Picked up a fair amount of crew members too. Gibraltar, I don't recall why. No, I guess I want to attack. This is one that you can just jump right to the duel. Yeah, so this one doesn't have a fort, and it didn't have a fort screen, but before earlier, I think it was in part one, I thought I attacked a town without a fort, but they fought on a fort anyway. Either way, that was a very quick victory. And I might take over this town at some point in the in the playthrough. I do take over this town. And it's a weak town. I don't know if I have enough men though. Oh, see, the guy left Rio de Hatch, and maybe I got a tip that he was in Gibraltar. I'm pretty sure this was the guy that was supposed to be in Rio, Rio de Hatch. Seems like it's, o maybe it's always Marquis de Silva. <laughs> I know I fought him earlier. I'm not, I guess I'm not keeping him captive, though, so he's just... Just fighting him to say, hey, give me a piece of a map. Tell me something. Yeah, he's holding up pretty good, but I'll get him. sure this is map is the one that took me a while to find the location so I don't remember the map completely from when I was younger I probably would have recognized it immediately back then but this one had me a little confused of course there's only a few spots it could be but I think I went to all the other spots first but as good as quite a trip it's Again, on the opposite, just about the opposite side of the map, because it's due north. So I'm going to attack Gibraltar again. I think I'm attempting to, uh, seeing if I can take it over since they lost some men when I fought them the first time. Yeah, so that map that I got is Florida, which of course is on the northern part of the map, and I'm at the very, probably about as far south as you can sail on this map. Pretty sure I took it over, let's see. Nope. Guess not. I guess I just thought I'd show a pointless battle. Because it is kind of pointless. <laughs> I don't know. I contemplated editing even more just, just to see if I can get it down to three parts, but... I suspect anyone that watches this probably watch some of part one and jump to part four just to see the ending. Ah, another galleon. 
course, when I divide with the plunder, I have to get rid of all but one galleon, but I'll be capturing galleons pretty much on a regular basis, I guess, from now on, just because I think I got the Spanish annoyed enough. And I'm in, I mean, I said at one point, this was an area of the map that they do sometimes show up in down near Gibraltar, so it's not too unusual. I'm seeing them now more often. About the same number of men, same number of guns around. And fairly even match up here. I typically don't lose ship battles unless the wind really messes me up. Though it happens more often in the harder difficulties. I typically stick to journeyman difficulty just because I don't want to deal with sailing very slow across the world map. Suppose if you were to play on the harder difficulties, it might be worth taking the skill at navigation rather than fencing. Here I am just charging into the guy. That's probably the best way to do it, just for time. You can spend a long time on some of these battles, except they will end on you if you take too long. They should be in good shape, because I hit their ship a lot and eliminated a lot of their men. Yeah, I took him down quick. They must have been hauling more than their ship was supposed to be able to carry. I see that a lot. Not sure why the computer gets to carry a bit more. <laughs> if I took their ship, I should be able to carry everything they had. The treasure fleet. Of course, I'm going to attack. I got to capture the treasure fleet. So yeah, I leave. I think I show you capturing the treasure fleet once or twice, and the silver train once. reason why I left some of these battles in is because I thought it was something different to see. <laughs> I did get hit and there was 26 guns so it's not great but Not really in a position, I guess, to take over cities right now, but I will be a little bit later. Part three. It will be time to start really putting the hurt on the Spanish. Right now, I'm mostly harassing them. But I'm starting to find galleons, like I said. That allows me to get a much larger crew without it having, having to uh, rely on a gigantic fleet. Plus, you can only bring, you know, you can bring more men into a land battle. So you don't have to just carry what's on a single ship. So when you attack a town like this with your ship, or get into a ship battle, you can only have the crew that fits on the ship. Okay, the end of this part is nearing completion. So yeah, so we got the treasure fleet. Which, uh, 36,000 gold is good, but we got more when we defeated the town of Santiago that didn't have the treasure fleet in port so it really just depends on the city you're attacking I and mean, you get bonus gold for capturing the treasure fleet but the town itself doesn't have much money doesn't matter too much so I 
wonder if I'm dividing up the plunder again, even though I have a... Oh yeah, I don't have another Inca treasure map. I have a map to my mother, so... Looks like you're gonna have to wait for part three for me to rescue... Captain Meyer's mother. a bit to load that. I guess I'm not dividing up the plunder. I'm going to sign up 92 men. Although I don't I don't know necessarily if it matters how many men you have when you divide up the plunder. Because you're always going to get depending on the difficulty level you know the same number amount of portions. So I'm going to shrink the fleet a bit. I'm getting a lot of regular galleons, not war galleons. Yeah, I gotta sell some food since I can only carry 255 anyway. Well, this town has a lot of money. Alright, this is the end of part two. Thanks for, <laughs> for watching if you're still with me.